I don't know what I'm doing. But I'm going to take over. Thank <laughs> you.
Good morning, and welcome to St. Joseph Church. The risen Christ goes before us into God's glory. With joyful alleluias, we celebrate, giving praise and thanks. Our mass intention this morning is for the people of our four parish family. I invite you to stand up and join in the praying of the synod prayer found on the inside cover of your missal. We stand, we stand before, before you, you, Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as we, we gather, gather together, together in your name. name. With, With you, you alone, alone to guide us, us make, make yourself at home in our hearts. hearts. Teach, Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity, so that we may journey together to eternal life, and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning will be number 180. Alleluia, alleluia, let the holy anthem rise, number 180. with gladness and the joyful valleys ring with hosannas in the highest to our Savior and our King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, let the sun from out the way. He has risen up in triumph from the darkness of the grave. He's the splendor He's the lamp of endless day. He's the very Lord of glory who is risen up today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed Jesus, make us rise from the life of this corruption to the life that never dies. May your glory be our portion when the days of time are past and the dead shall be awakened by the trumpet's mighty blast. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. 
Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind. And no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love is everlasting. I was hard-pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love is everlasting. A reading from the first letter of St. John. <clears throat> Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world, and the victory that conquers the world is our faith. <clears throat> who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our Easter sequence can be found on page 142 in the Missal, page 142. The English translation is there. Victime Pascali laudes, Imolent Christiani, Agnus Redemit Oves, Christus innocens patri, reconciliavit peccatores. Mors ad vita duello, conflixere mirando, dux vitae mortus regnat vivus. Dignobis Maria, quid vidis di in via, sepulcrum Christi viventis, 
et gloriam vidi resurgentis, angelicos testes, sudarium et vestes, surexit Christus spes mea, precedet suos in Galilea, Shemus Christum sorexise, amor tuis vere, tu nobis victorax miserere. Amen. Alleluia. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to john glory to you o lord on the evening of that first day of the week when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the jews jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them peace be with you when he had said this he showed them his hands and his side the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas called Didymus one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my fingers into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. He is risen. Truly, he is risen. Happy Easter. Today, we celebrate the last day of the octave of Easter, when we've had Easter every single day for the last week, ending with today. It's also Divine Mercy Sunday. And today, we also have the special gift of receiving a, a new younger brother in the faith. Uh, Trevor and his whole family is here, and we're so glad to have them with us. 
it's a great, uh, a great day. During my homily, you're probably going to wonder, why is he preaching about this right now? I'm going to start with something painful, but I promise that it's a message of hope and encouragement, okay? So hang with me. It's kind of like Good Friday into Easter, okay? Like the whole message. Our reading from the Acts of the Apostles describes the early Christian community and what it really means to be the body of Christ, the church. And it starts out with this really beautiful line. The community of believers was of one heart and mind. Was of one heart and mind. Why? Because they were one with the heart of Jesus, one with the mind of the Father, right? They were of one heart and mind. And that's what we're called to be as Christians. But also ever since the early church, there have been times of division, of rivalry, of hatred, of judgment, of miscommunication, right? Because the church, though divine, is also human. And we know that that's part of our lot as fallen humanity, right? We so often fall into times of division. And unfortunately, in our own community, we currently have, we currently are experiencing this sort of division, right? There are some uh, of our friends, some of our neighbors, some of our relatives, some of our fellow people in various ministries or coworkers who have decided to break away from this community and start their own church. Those who start their own church break away from the church Christ has founded. Those who are not in communion with the local bishop, Bishop James Powers, who are not in communion with the one Pope Francis, do not only betray the church, they betray Jesus Christ himself and are not in communion with Christ, regardless of what the excuse is, regardless of whether the excuse is poor leadership, regardless of whether the excuse is that their liturgy is better or they are more faithful, no excuse is sufficient. That's the painful news. But here's the beautiful news of the gospel. That is not the end of the story. That is not the end of the story. We hear in our gospel today that the apostles are gathered without Thomas, who's off doing his own thing. We don't know what it is. I'm not going to put it on it. He's off doing his own thing. He's not with them when Jesus appears to them and breathes on them the Holy Spirit. He misses out because he has gone off on his own. He misses out on a beautiful moment with Christ and his church. What do the apostles do? What does Jesus do, right? And here's our lesson, I think. The apostles tell him, we've seen the Lord, and Thomas reacts with cynicism. His best friends, 10 of them, 10 of his closest friends, whom he has lived with and worked with for the past three years, whom he has shared every intimate moment, all say together, we have seen the Lord. And you know what his response is? I don't believe any of you. Do you think that was painful for the apostles to have one of their closest friends kind of in this stubbornness of, I'm not going to listen to a word you say? How do they treat him? With love. With the merciful love of Jesus. Because the next time that they're all gathered together and Thomas is there, they don't kick him out and say, well, forget you then. Right? He's there. They bring him in. And what does Jesus do? He appears in the midst of them because he has not abandoned them either. Right? And I think all of us, if we're honest, can admit to having a stubborn streak like Thomas. When we know what's right, we're convinced of our own way. Well, maybe none of you do. I have the stubborn streak. Maybe all of you are holier than I am. But I think there's always been a time, right? We've had this stubborn streak. We said, no, I know the right way. I know my way. And I'm not going to listen to a word any of you say. I'm not going to listen to the church. I'm not going to listen to the bishop. I'm not going to listen to whatever. I'm not going to listen to the gospel of Jesus Christ unless he comes and stands in front of me and changes my mind, right? Dangerous prayer to pray, as Thomas found out. So he's there with them. They treat him with love, even amidst that pain and that tension and that doubt and that cynicism, amidst that little division, right? And Jesus shows up. And what does he do? He meets Thomas with his merciful love. And he, I don't know if you've seen this painting by Caravaggio of this moment, okay? It's a very famous painting. And Jesus is like literally grabbing the hand of Thomas and pulling it into his side, right? 
feel the nut marks in my hand, feel the wound in my side. What does he do? He brings Thomas right into the woundedness, right into the places of division. Why? Because that is where Jesus' merciful love is working to redeem us all. And that is no different for our community. In the midst of our division, in the midst of our woundedness, in the midst of our hurts with our friends and our family and our neighbors and whatever, that is where Jesus wants to work his redeeming merciful love right here and right now. He draws Thomas's hand into his side. Thomas, I have been raised from the dead. I have been glorified by my father, but my joy is not complete without you. No shaming, no wagging his finger, saying to heck with you, right? I want you too. Our battle is not against flesh and blood. Our human brothers and sisters, our neighbors, our family, our friends, our co-workers are not our enemies. They are our brothers and sisters. Sometimes we might be stubborn, sometimes they might be stubborn, sometimes we're both stubborn and Jesus has to change both of our hearts, right? They are not our enemies. Jesus draws his hand into his side and think about this. If you put your hand on the outside of your chest, you can feel your heartbeat. What it must have been like for Thomas to have his hand inside Jesus' pierced side and feel the beating heart of Christ literally in his hand. I can only imagine that that memory was seared into his mind for the rest of his life. The beating heart of the merciful love of Jesus Christ. You might be asking, why are we talking about this? Well, it's Divine Mercy Sunday. And I think the message of encouragement and hope in the midst of our pain, in the midst of a Calvary that our community is going through, in the midst of rejection and betrayal and confusion and misunderstanding, that the message of the merciful love of the risen Lord Jesus, the message of patience, kindness, gentleness, generosity, self-control, self-denial, is something that we need to hear to pray for those who are in this division, to pray for ourselves that we might respond not with anger, not from a place of unredeemed woundedness, but from the very wounds of Christ which pour out blood and water for the salvation of the world. And that is the mystery that Trevor enters in today, receiving that same blood and water, right, in baptism, being baptized into the death of Christ, raised into the, death, into the resurrection of Christ for eternal life, being confirmed and receiving the Holy Spirit, that same Holy Spirit that Jesus breathed upon his apostles, right? That is the mystery of divine mercy because he died for us while we were yet sinners. Each and every one of us. And so each and every one of us should be willing, like him, to suffer for those among us who are in a state of division, right? The last thing, I guess, that I will say Why would the enemy, who is not these people, why would the enemy, who is the devil, the word of devil actually means division, to divide, to throw apart. Why would he be attacking our area right now? You see, because the devil doesn't usually attack where people don't care. If people are complacent and moving about from sin to sin, if there's no act of grace going on, the devil can sit on his couch eating cheese puffs and watching dirty soap operas. He doesn't have to do anything. We take care of it ourselves, right? But in a place where the love of Christ is shown, in a place where people are baptized into his merciful love, into eternal life, in a place where families are being reconciled, in a place where people are flocking to confession for over three hours every Saturday during the entire season of Lent, the devil gets a little nervous. He throws a little temper tantrum and tries to kick up some dirt of division. But just like when anyone throws a temper tantrum, you don't get all disturbed by it. Oh no, what are we gonna do, right? It's like, who's in control? Our loving Father. God, the Father of love, is in control. And yes, he's allowing us to experience this for a time, 
so that we might grow stronger as a family. Because a family that works through moments of division, a family that works through moments of misunderstanding, of hardship, of trial, and comes out on the other side is a stronger family. The Lord is risen. Truly, he is risen. Happy Easter. At this moment, I invite Trevor and his parents and godparents and his family to join me in the back. So if you all want to stand and face the back of the baptismal font so you can see. And I can get an altar server to hold the book. That would be awesome. friends, Trevor, with the approval of his parents, has asked to be baptized. Let us call upon the Father to number him among his adopted children in Christ. And because this is the same Easter water that was blessed on Easter Vigil, we don't have to bless it again because it's already been blessed, uh, but we get to pray a prayer of thanksgiving over it. The response is, blessed be God. Praise to you, almighty God and Father, for you have created water to cleanse and to give life. Blessed be God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, the Father's only Son, for you offered yourself on the cross, that in the blood and water flowing from your side and through your death and resurrection, the church might be born. Blessed be God. Praise to you, God, the Holy Spirit, for you anointed Christ at his baptism in the waters of the Jordan, that we all might be baptized in you. Blessed be God. You have called your child Trevor to this cleansing water, that he may share in the faith of your church and have eternal life. By the mystery of this consecrated water, lead him to a new and spiritual birth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Trevor has completed a long preparation and is ready for baptism. He will receive new life from God who is love. He will become Christian. From now on, he will, we will need to help him even more. This is especially true of you, his parents, who, has, who have given them permission to be baptized and who have the primary responsibility for their upbringing. But all of us who have in any way prepared them to meet Christ today must always be ready to assist them. And so before Trevor makes his profession of faith in our presence, let us, in his presence, publicly and with a deep sense of responsibility, renew our own profession of faith, which is the faith of the church. And so I invite you to join me in saying the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trevor, you have spent a long time in preparation, and you have now asked to be baptized. Your parents have agreed to your request. 
Your teachers, companions, and friends have helped you. And all who have come here today promise you the example of their faith and their loving support. Before you are baptized, reject Satan and profess your faith here in the presence of God's church. And so if you would respond to the following questions, I do. Do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? Do you reject Satan, father of sin and prince of darkness? Trevor, do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? So, Trevor, you can come up to the baptismal font. Come all the way up here. Trevor, I'm going to have you stand on this stool, okay? Yeah, and then if you'll lean over. Trevor? Lean all the way over. Trevor, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And here's a towel for your head. <laughs> you can dry yourself off there. Trevor, you have become a new creation and have clothed yourself in Christ. Receive this baptismal garment and bring it unstained to the judgment seat of our Lord Jesus Christ so that you may have everlasting life. Amen. And then we'll go back up to the front. Godparents, please come forward to give to the newly baptized the light of Christ. You can give that to him. Trevor, you have been enlightened by Christ. Walk always as a child of the light and keep the flame of faith alive in your heart. When the Lord comes, may you go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Amen. And you can come in the middle, and if you can grab the oil off of that table there. Trevor, you can come over here. Oh, hold it right up, straight up and down. There you go. Trevor, by your baptism, you have been born again in Christ, and you have become a member of Christ and of his priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost and given by them and their successors to the baptized. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit, which you are to receive, will make you more like Christ and help you to be a witness to his suffering, death, and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be an active member of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and love. My dear friends, let us pray to God, the, our Father, that he will pour out the Holy Spirit on, on Trevor to strengthen him with his, with his gifts and anoint him to be more like Christ, the Son of God. All-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. 
Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Trevor, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And you say, and with your spirit. Fantastic. You can go ahead and blow out your candle and join the family. Let's show our gratitude to the God for bringing us a new member of the church. have not seen but still believe. With confident faith we bring our concerns before God. That on this Divine Mercy Sunday, the Church will rededicate herself to the living and proclaiming Christ's mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in troubled areas of the world, that Christ's victory over death may bring an end to war and suffering. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who question and doubt the reality of the risen Christ, that Jesus may invite them into his wounds and restore their faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our families, that the power of the resurrection may bring new opportunities for healing growth, and reconciliation within our homes. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our community that need our prayers, in a special way for Larry Williams, Nori Mason, Eve Daigle, Rena Shabasta, Rod Bauer, Mary Bilodeau, and Bev Norellis, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our faithful departed, especially Betty Tasker and Kathleen Wilson, that they may know the joy of eternal life in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers we hold in the quiet of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, the resurrection of your Son gives us a new birth to a living hope. Let us live in that hope always, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join us for the hymn during the preparation of the gifts, which is number 570. Alleluia, number one, number 570. Oh, 
brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the ablations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, Overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Oh, holy, holy. Therefore, a most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, 
which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that of all of us, who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Our communion song this morning will be number 176, Ye Sons and Daughters, number 176.
Our second communion hymn this morning will be number 341. Behold the Lamb, number 341. Those who were in the dark are thankful for the sunlight. We who live, we who die are grateful for his gift. Thankful for his love. Be Shall come 
to know His glory. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a few announcements this morning. First of all, Father Joseph had to return home on short notice. His father um, had a stroke and had open heart surgery, and he had to go home to take care of him in his recovery. He hopes to be back at the very beginning of May. So if you would please pray for him, and his father's name is Bala Shauri. That would be much, much appreciated. Everyone is welcome to join us today at Our Lady of Lourdes for a Divine Mercy celebration beginning at 2 p.m. The event will include adoration, confessions, the rosary, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and veneration of the Divine Mercy image. You can attend for a short time or stay for the whole, whole entire event. It's up to you. Uh, you can join us here at St. Joseph this weekend for the Eucharistic Miracles of the World display, which is still set up down in the basement. There are 80 miracles that are displayed on boards down there, along with a first-class relic of Blessed Carlo Acutis with information about his life, if you have no idea who that is. He's awesome, uh, and that's available for veneration downstairs. And lastly, uh, I'd like to invite a speaker to come up from the robotics club at the school and give a short, uh, there you go, he's coming up, a short talk about the robotics team, and he will also invite you downstairs for hospitality. So. Good morning. My name is Siddhar Ganesh. I'm a member of the Spartan Robotics Club at St. Joseph's School. Spartan Robotics is a STEM-focused club for St. Joseph's students for third through eighth grade elementary and middle school students. Working with parents and high school mentors, each year we team with other students to design, build, and program a VEX IQ robot to accomplish a set of tasks. Last month, four Spartan Robotics teams had the honor of representing St. Joseph's School at Wisconsin State Tournament. While all the St. Joseph's School teams did well, my team, Beast 2.0, won both the skills competition and teamwork competition at the tournament and claimed the title of elementary level state champs. This qualified our team for the prestigious Worlds Tournament held in Dallas, Texas later this month. Immediately after Mass, Spartan Robotics is sponsoring hospitality in the basement. We will have a robots and game field on display. We are asking for any financial support you may be able to help us with to afford our trips to Worlds, but also for your prayers as we re represent our community in competition with similar state and national championship teams from over 76 countries. Thank you, and we hope to talk with you more about robotics following Mass. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. 
Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go forth the masses and it alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our song of sending forth this morning, or at least downstairs, is number 172, Jesus Christ is Risen Today, number 172. Jesus Christ is risen today. 